Okay, Megan, go ahead. Good morning, everybody. This is Sunday morning, and welcome to our Sunday morning coffee house. It's um, my name is Megan Moore, and it's a pleasure to have all of you this morning. I'd like to share our mission statement with you, which is to better people's lives and to be a force for good in the world. And it is my pleasure this morning to introduce Russell Mariani. Russell is the co-founder of the Center for Functional Nutrition, and he is um, an author, a health educator, and digestive wellness expert. And his recent book is Principal Eating, The No Diet Way to Complete Health. And there it is, Russell's holding it up. So thank you all for joining us. And uh, Russell, we're looking forward to um, hearing what you have to share with us this morning. So I'm gonna hand it over to you. Thank you, Megan. And good morning, everybody. Welcome to our Sunday morning coffee house. I have been reflecting all week on what I would like to share with everybody this morning. And <clears throat> basically the, uh, the theme is what unites us <clears throat> is more important than what divides us. What unites us is more powerful than what divides us. What unites us is more influential than what divides us. So, I'd like to begin uh, by just sharing my screen. I wanted to um, show you something. I get this dictionary word of the day that pops up in my email. And this morning, the word of the day, Megan, can, can you hear me? Just let me know. Yes. Okay, great. So the word of the day is venerate. The definition is to hold in deep respect. Synonym would be revere and usage. In our culture, we venerate the elderly and pay heed to their wisdom. Well, I don't know if we actually do that, but we should certainly strive to do that. Um, I often think about, uh, given our current state of affairs nationally and globally, where are the elders? Where are the wise people to lead us? Well, they're out there, and we have been uh, fortunate to uh, visit with many of them over the last 10, 12, 14 weeks since we started the coffee house. But I thought I would start this morning with this word venerate because today happens to be the birthday of my own mother. She is 88 years old today. Her name is Elizabeth Mary Fulton, was her maiden name. And in 1954, she married Dante Gianfalco Mariani. And that's where I get my last name, of course. So my mother is 88 years old today. And my dad, who is also, and she's alive, <laughs> and my father is also alive and well. They're both alive and well. My dad will turn 97 in September. So, so in thinking during the past week, one of the things that came to mind about elders and wisdom and leadership was the whole, the idea of an inflection point. And earlier in this month, we celebrated a, a rather uh, difficult anniversary in our country, in the world, and that was the, the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, August 6th and August 8th, 1945. I don't know if the world could have been more divided than it was during World War II. I don't know if things could have been uh, more grim uh, other, than, other than where they are today. So in, in 19, I mean, to, so here today, uh, August of 2020, it was 75 years ago that 
the world as we knew it really came to an end with the, with the dropping of the first atomic bombs on cities inhabited by people like you and I. And tens of thousands of people were killed instantly at the impact of these terrible, terrible weapons of war and destruction. And one of my teachers, one of the most important teachers of my life and my career was a young Japanese soldier, 18 years old. And he was among many thousands of Japanese soldiers who went into the utter destruction that was the leftover of those two bombs. He was actually in the cleanup crew at Hiroshima. And as he was, I've heard him tell this story many times, as he was literally removing bodies, bodies that were still discernible as bodies, removing bodies from that terrible devastation, he broke down and wept several times, many times. And he said that as a consequence of that experience, he dedicated his life to peace. He couldn't imagine that the world would continue on its current, its, the trajectory at that time, which led to World War II and led to the destruction, the death and dis, the dis, death of millions of people and the destructions of so many beautiful cities and ecosystems. And so when he came out of that experience, he went looking around uh, in, in, where he lived in Tokyo and found a group of people who were already dedicated to world peace through, through a healing modality that has come to be known as macrobiotics. And so this man was Michio Kushi. And uh, he, he had teachers you know, before him that taught the idea that there was a unifying principle in life and that this unifying principle was the deepest truth of our human existence and that this is what we should be learning about because this is what truly unites us as brothers and sisters and in one family. And so he started this movement with the idea that the basic idea was that we could achieve one peaceful world through the biological transformation of humanity. And so this wasn't an, a casual effort at helping people to be more healthy for purely physical reasons. This whole movement was designed to reestablish a new type of human being. This whole movement was established to create a new civilization that was based on the truth, the scientific truth of what truly unites us, which is the cells in our body. You know, you can talk about differences all day, differences in religion, differences in faith, differences of culture, differences of beliefs, but Truly, there is a bottom line that unites each of us. So it's not just a metaphor that we're brothers and sisters. It's not just a metaphor that we're in, we're all members of one family. We are truly members of one family and we all had the same origin. We all, each one of us and every human being that's ever lived started out as a single cell in our mother's womb, an egg that was fertilized by another cell, a sperm. And from that one cell, it started to divide and continued to divide and turned into this amazing miracle of the, of the human body, of the human body, mind, spirit, soul. There, we cannot separate any of these things other than to talk about them, other than to discuss them. But from the moment we're conceived, all of these things are occurring simultaneously. And so this is what we are. This is who we are. And through the course of my life, adult life and career, it's become more and more, um, more and more important, more and more clear that 
that what unites us is far more powerful than what divides us. And that what unites us is that we all have cells and that we need to learn how to take care of ourselves because that's the ultimate way to take care of ourselves and that teaching others how to do this is the best way to go forward. You know, we can say that the mandate is to love one another, but there's a very practical way of doing that. And all of the, all of the people who have shared in this coffee house uh, from the beginning right up until today have all shared a piece of this puzzle, a piece of this uh, dynamic, whether it's through meditation, whether it's through breathing, whether it's through nutrition, whether it's through exercise or yoga, whether it's through shamanism, whether it's through other uh, means, the ultimate goal is to acknowledge that we are all united and that we're here for a greater purpose. And that purpose is not to divide, that the purpose is not to create war, that purpose is not to destroy the environment. That purpose is to unify and to demonstrate in the same way that every cell of our body demonstrates 24 hours a day, unconditional love in service to the other cells in its neighborhood, literally. We, so we don't have to look any further than inside of our own bodies to the cells of our lungs and kidneys and brain and bones. The cells of our body are constantly speaking to us, but are we listening to them? So that was the message I wanted to share this morning. Uh, I wanted to actually acknowledge everybody who has shared previously. I, I made a quick list this morning, so I just wanna go over that list. And then I wanna share a very short video with everyone about cells. It's one of the most amazing it's less than three minutes long, but it's very inspiring, and I wanted to share that with everybody this morning. So, um, so uh, I see Timothy Cope, Kate Cope is there with us this morning. So thank you, Timothy, uh, who presented uh, just a week ago, and Wes Hamilton before that, and Carl Bennett, Catherine Taylor, Martine Goldberg, Virginia Harper, Danny Shanahan, Michelle Licata, and Margie Flint the wonderful herbalist from the North Shore of Boston. Uh, Megan, if I forgot anybody, let me know. And then we had uh, musical guests, uh, Tom Tracy and Mary Harris and Dan Shanahan and Carla B sang for us one morning. And last week, Jay Euler sang for us. So I wanna thank everybody who has uh, shared in the coffee house so far. And we look forward to many future coffee houses. Megan, did I forget anybody? No, but Brian, maybe he um, might be able to help us out here because uh, I'm sure that we've had a few, well, we had the Father's Day and then the Mother's Day, but I think you got a good number, Russell. All right. Well, if I left anyone out, my sincere apologies. Um, so this morning, Megan and I had breakfast outside uh, in our little uh, pavilion, as we call it, our little gazebo. And I was looking out to the back of the yard and I could hear a dove, uh, a morning dove in, in the tree. And I was tr finalizing my thoughts about what I wanted to share this morning. And the thought crossed my mind that what unites us is more compelling than what divides us. And at that moment, the dove flew down from the branch that it was on and landed on the ground. And at that moment, I knew exactly what I was going to share and how I was going to share it this morning. So now I'm, I am going to share my screen and I'm going to share this magnificent short little video that I found a couple of years ago. And it's absolutely magnificent. Now I hope it works and I hope I'll, I'll bring it onto the big screen here somehow.
Okay. Um, I just wanted to point out there, we're going to open it up for Q&A now and comments. Um, and I would really love to hear from you specifically about anything that came up for you during that video or anything else that you would like to share. I just want to point out, I don't know if you remember, but at one point in the video, there's a, a cell that kind of is crawling along the ground and then in it, it literally engulfs another cell. And so what that is, that is a natural killer cell engulfing a bacteria or a virus. Okay, so one of the things that I've been sharing since the beginning of the pandemic is that part of the reason we're in the, pro the, the problem that we're in is that we do not have a healthcare system. We have a disease care system. Because if we had a healthcare system, you would have dozens and dozens, hundreds of experts on TV, 24 hours a day, teaching all of us what to do to strengthen and support our immune system. Because a normally functioning immune system in a truly healthy human body has no problem whatsoever with any virus on earth. <laughs> and that's, that's just the truth, okay? So we would all do well to learn what what habits and what influences, what foods, beverages, snacks weaken our immune system and not do them and learn what things strengthen, nourish, support our immune system, not just for the pandemic, but to support each and every one of those cells so that we can be the best version of ourselves. All right, so just uh, raise your hand if you're on the video feed so I can see you, and then, and then I'll call on you, and then please uh, unmute yourself uh, to share. Anybody? Feel free. <laughs> Pat Hanbury, uh, unmute yourself, Pat. Go ahead. Uh, thank you. Uh, that yes. video was awesome. I, I really enjoyed that, and I think it's a gives a great message. Well, this whole recording will be a great message for uh, people. Um, you know, when it comes to our health and taking care of ourselves. And I've obviously been learning that uh, quite a bit here lately. And um, having the, the, receiving the energy that we need and spreading that energy, good energy to the rest of humanity and the planet and the universe. And that's where I'm at. And I appreciate you having these coffee houses. They've been awesome and uh, teaching a lot of different ways for all of us to find the methods that work best for us to heal ourselves, become our authentic selves and step into our power. So thank you so much and happy birthday to your mom. <laughs> it's also my, sis my oldest sister Maureen's birthday today too. Oh, so great. Oh, wonderful. Only 1952. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, my mom is 1932. Yeah, awesome. 1923. <laughs> Thank you for sharing what you did. That was beautifully said. Very, very uh, powerful. Thank you, Pat. Thank you. And thanks for being part of our community. We love you. <laughs> okay, anyone else? Um, raise your hand so I can call on you if you're on video. Otherwise, if you're just on audio, you can unmute. Oh, there's a low impact. <laughs> uh, go ahead, please. Oh, it's Carla B. <laughs> my, my low impact friend, Carla B. Hold on a second. Let me unmute you. Hmm. Carla, you're going to have to unmute yourself there. The lower left part of your screen. Just click on audio. Unmute. There, there it goes. goes. Uh, I thought I was watching pictures of the actual cells. It appears it was something constructed. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, it was an animation, yes. Yeah, yes. yes. <laughs> I don't know if I'd be breaking down in tears if, if I had known it was an animation, but I, it was so moving. It's just so moving. I mean, I, 
in the best sense, it's, it's the truth anyway, so. Let's thank you, Carla. How to keep this, you know, in front of my awareness or anybody's awareness, probably, uh, would be a noble. I, I, yeah. had this, I had the same reaction the very first time I saw it. And there are many mornings when I wake up and I'll just put that on and, you know, I'll watch it two or three times. And so let's acknowledge that the artist behind that is a man named Frank D. Gregorio. And if, if you Google his, if you go to YouTube and, and then search for Frank D. Gregorio, he not only has this video, but he's done literally dozens of videos about, you know, cell biology and they're all fascinating. Thank you. I will probably do that for sure. Thank you, Carla. Thank you. Um, I'd like to say something. Megan, please. So, and uh, many of our presenters have come on and told us stories. And there is the value of storytelling. And Russell, I have heard this story that you told about Michio Kushi, Michio a number of times before. And I must say that I could probably hear it a thousand more times. It wouldn't matter because um, each time I hear it, it, it's fresh and it's new and it's something worth listening to. And that's what I found both with what you said today and you know, with Timothy and Wes and everybody else who has spoken, what they have said, I could hear again and again because what they're saying is worth listening to. It's authentic. It's uh, the truth for them is the way that they speak it. And so that's how it lands for me. And um, there was another little bit of that story about Michio addressing his parents that you didn't speak to today. That was also water, a, lovely, Danny, it's um, a lovely part of that. If you'd like to share that, I don't know. Um, but because just because you started out with that, um, you know, the word well, benefit. Megan, pl please share your memory of that part of the story. Go ahead. Well, I just remember, what I remember is that when he was leaving, I think he turned and um, offered his um, thanks to his mother and father and his sense of gratitude to them for bringing him into the world and how that, that's all I, that's what I remember. Yeah, that's beautiful that that happened. You know, when he left Tokyo uh, in 1949, I believe that was the last time he saw his parents. Um, I could be wrong there. But uh, later as he, he taught uh, veneration of our ancestors, of course, that's a, a very traditional Japanese thing. But, and he always talked about yin and yang. Uh, I remember I was at a lecture two miles up the road at Amherst College in 1978, and Michio was on stage, uh, and the title of the lecture was The Origin of the Universe. And sitting in the chair next to me was the poet from Minnesota, Robert Bly. And Michio starts talking about how uh, the universe, well, there's universal energy, and then the energy uh, differentiates into two forces, yin and yang, these complementary forces. And in the middle of his lecture, I'm kind of writing notes furiously, and Robert Bly takes my notebook and starts writing something down in my notebook in green ink, and he puts it back on my lap. And I didn't look at it until the lecture was over. But Michio is teaching about yin and yang, and what he said then you know, in lectures right up until uh, his passing about 10 years ago was that yin and yang were our parents. Yin, these forces of yin and yang were our oldest ancestors. And so that was part of the story. So that when he was honoring his individual mother and father, he was acknowledging that they were simply manifestations of the universe as we all are. So that poem, that little bit of scribbling that Robert Bly did in my notebook that day was actually, he wrote it in green ink, and it was a poem from the uh, 
Sufi poet Rumi. And, um, and it, went, it, it goes like this. To praise is the whole thing. A man who can praise comes towards us like ore from the silences of rock. His heart that dies presses out for others, a wine that stays fresh forever. To praise is the whole thing. A woman who can praise comes towards us like ore from the silences of rock. Her heart that dies presses out for others, a wine that stays fresh forever. And I've had almost 40 years to think about that moment. And I, I know that what Robert Bly was saying was <clears throat> Michio, uh, for all of his faults, was a leader who was acknowledging what unifies us and was constantly teaching and trying to uh, help the world heal from its divisions by finding the one thing that truly unifies us all, <clears throat> which is the blood that runs through our body, literally the cells that run through our body. Uh, and so this is, this is something that uh, going forward into the future um, we can really trust uh, that will bring us together. And we need that now more than, more than ever. And of course, the cells that we're talking about aren't just the cells of your body or my body. They're in the cells of every animal. They're in the cells of every plant. And so, again, when we say that what the earth is and what we are is not different, what the earth is and what we are is the same thing, that is literal. So the cell of all living things, we share in common this, not just a common ancestry, but a common physiology. All right. Anyone else like to share? Actually, I guess we're at the top of the hour here. And uh, so unless somebody has something that they really would like to share, I would, want, I would like to wrap it up just for the, um, to honor everyone's time. I do have a... Um, a good news sharing I would like to share. Somebody sent me something this week that definitely put a smile on my face. And uh, I think I actually shared it with one or two of you out there. So don't say anything. This will be a surprise for everyone else. So <clears throat> this was um, uh, a little piece of good news. A music teacher uh, somewhere in the United States uh, wrote a song to express her feelings about the pandemic. <clears throat> so let me see if I can pull that up. And it, again, it's very short. Just take a minute to share. And here it is. Music teacher song. Okay, here we go. As much of the world continues on in isolation, people working from home, they're trying to figure out things to do with their family, uh, things to figure out how to pass the time. Yeah. Linz and Kels, a lot of teachers have been going online and coaches trying to, trying to help out their students and, and their athletes. Um, this one teacher in particular, music teacher, I thought was phenomenal. Not only did she pick up an instrument and decide to help out her student and spread some joy, but she wrote a song and as inspiration, she was going to share what she's been going through and how it makes her feel sure. while she is in isolation. Have a look. Hey, so as some of you guys might know, I'm a music teacher and I found that one of the best ways that I can process the whole transition to online learning and teaching is to write a song. So I wrote a song. I'd like to share that with you guys now. Here we go. Oh my God, that was 
she was at all. <laughs> no, she was so sweet and like I know. little. <laughs> Okay, everybody. I hope that put a smile. Oh, I just tried to unmute everybody. What's going on? Okay. We are all unmuted. If you're not, I just tried to unmute everybody twice. So thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Yes. Thanks thank everyone. you, Matt. That was a great day. Thank you, thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you so very much. much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye. Great energy. Bye, Bye guys. Have thank a you. Bye. Bye bye, Martine. Au revoir. Au revoir. <laughs> bye, Martine. <laughs>